Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the Joys of Trains. Today we're going to be using Substance Painter to texture a basic teapot model and get it into trains. So the first thing we're going to need for this tutorial is the export preset for Substance Painter. Now someone already made one uh, and it's already on the trains wiki here. So all we need to do is just go to the trains wiki and type in PBR metal because it's on the PBR metal page. Go to the third one down. And you can either click on this six external useful links button, or you can scroll all the way down and go right here and click that download from Google Drive link. And then you'll see it says TRS 2019. Let's download that. And I'm gonna put it on my desktop. It's already on here. So just put it on my desktop and we're good to go there. All right, and I don't need Chrome anymore, so I'm just gonna close that. And next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up Substance Painter. Now this is a, a one-time thing you'll have to do. You won't have to do this ever again, um, but it's pretty simple. So all we need to do is we go up to File, Import Resources, and click on this button here that says Add Resources. I'm gonna to go to my desktop, which is where I saved my TRS 2019 preset. I'm gonna click that and click open. All right. And usually when you add resources into Substance Painter, if it doesn't know what it already is uh, via an algorithm, it will put it as uh, undefined, but it already knows that this is an export because that's the only thing it could be. So we're gonna leave it like that. But we do wanna go down to here where it says import your resources to. And we want to put it under shelf because if we put it under current session, it will only save it for the, the current um, session that we're using. Uh, but if we want to use it again, we need to put it in our shelf. And now it will never, uh, we never have to worry about re importing this again. All right. So just click import. It will import it. And it looks like nothing happened, but it actually did save it. So now we can close Substance Painter. We'll come back to it in just a moment. And I'm going to go to Blender here because I got my a lovely teapot model uh, and I have a material already named for it uh, and I just called it teapot but notice I didn't put anything beyond it I didn't put dot m dot pbr metal uh, we're not going to add the the uh, material name just yet because uh, we want to I don't want to have the the material name um, be a little, uh, have the file name of the texture be all a wonky because whenever you export a texture from Substance Painter with the a, a preset and however it's defined by default it, it normally will have the entire material name as the texture name so I just want to leave it simple as teapot all right so I'm going to go up to file go to export fbx and I'm going to use the same preset that we made in the prior episode which is the trains 19 export so you got everything here and I'm going to call it, yeah, you know, I'll just call it example. Example is fine. All right. So export FBX and it should have exported it in the same folder here. Yep. Example FBX. All right. So I'm going to go back to substance painter, go to file new, and I'm going to leave everything as is, except I'm going to select my mesh, which is example.fbx. And we don't need to import any normal maps or fake maps. Let's just click OK. All right, and now Substance Painter has our lovely teapot. I'm going to go quickly to texture settings here and bake mesh maps. I'm going to leave it at 1024 just because it's an example. All right. And so now we got our stuff text or our baked. Uh, I'm gonna go to a smart material and I already made a fun little smart material before. It's not particularly realistic for a teacup or a teapot rather, but you know, I think, I think it looks cool. So I have a dirty grid pattern, which I quite like. Uh, one reason why I made this one or use a bunch of different things to make it was because I wanted to test that it has a normal map here, which you can see it does definitely have that and test that it has a height map, which it definitely also has because I want to, I want to demonstrate what the, uh, what a height map will look like on a, on a curved model and not just a, a piece of ground texture or something like that, because it, it does produce different results that you may not think. 
All right, so we got all of our colors and everything here. We're all good to go. So uh, I'm going to go up to File, Export Textures. And right up here is the directory where it's going to export our textures to. So I'm going to put them in our my tutorial folder right in here. And I'm going to make a folder called textures just to keep myself organized. I'm going to put those in there. Now where it says config, we want to click on that and we want to take down the drop down window until we find TRS 2019. These are all of my special material um, configurations. So you want to use this one right here where it's TRS 2019. And you can change right here where, which file format you want yours to be in. You could put PNG or Tarja. I, rec I don't recommend using anything else other than just PNG or Tarja. I'm going to use PNG because that's my preferred format. I'm going to make sure this little checkbox or this uh, box here is ticked because that means I'm going to export the teapot material. If you have more materials, you would have a, a bunch of different ones here and you could tick which ones you actually want to export. Uh, and here you can change your, your texture size. Uh, I'm going to leave it at 1024 just for the example. And I'm going to untick export shader parameters because it's not crucial if you leave that ticked. It's just extra space that you uh, data you don't need for uh, exporting the trans 19. All right, that's all you need. Just hit export. And we'll export our three textures to the folder. So I'm going to open that folder now. And you see we got our albedo, normal, and parameter. So I'm just going to open these in my favorite program, DDS view, in order to make sure everything looks correct. All right, so we got our albedo here. It doesn't have a normal or alpha channel, which is what we don't really want one for this. We got our normal map, and it looks pretty nice. And if I go up to our alpha channel here, we can see we definitely got our height map working here. If we go to our parameter, you can see we got our, our very interesting looking parameter texture. If we look at our alpha channel, you see we do got a little bit of metallic going on here. I, I made sure I put some metallic in there. So that looks pretty good. So now pretty much we're done with Substance Painter. So I'm just going to minimize that for now. And I'm going to go back to Blender and I'm going to duplicate this teapot. So I'm going to do Shift D and I'm going to hit M to move it to a different layer. Now, the reason why I do this is because I want a different teapot model uh, where it has the material like this, where it has it with the doesn't have the end name suffix. Um, and I want one um, that or one that doesn't have it and one that does. This is because if I ever want to come and uh, re-export this teapot again and rework with it. If I throw the the teapot model that has the new name, Substance Painter is not going to recognize that I had this name before and it's not going to transfer it over. So it will look like I never had a texture there to begin with. So that's why I like to do that. But that's just my personal workflow. So since we are using the m.pbr metal material, we're going to do teapot.m.pbr metal. And I already have a material here named that, so I'm just gonna force that. All right, so I'm gonna go in here and add our three textures. If you watched our prior tutorial, we went on to do this. If not, go down to image, add a new image, go to image, open, and I'm gonna go to my folder where I have our textures. I'm gonna click on the albedo. I'm gonna untick that use alpha. We're gonna leave it as color under influence. I'm gonna hit new, open go back to our textures folder and find our normal map. We want to leave that use alpha ticked, but we want to untick under diffuse and color and go to geometry and tick on normal. Go to our last one here, click new, open, go back to our textures folder and go teapot parameter. Got our parameter texture going. Leave our use alpha ticked, untick our color and tick our specular hardness. All right. So that is our material all set. Let me see how it looks. See, it looks a little different in Blender, or at least in 2.7 compared to what it does in Substance Painter. If you use 2.8, it probably would look a little more PBR, but we can't use that right now for exporting. So I'm just going to save this file. All right. So this teapot should be ready to go for trains now. So I'm going to go back up to File, Export, FBX. And I'm going to go, I'm going to dump this in my asset folder. So I'm going to put asset teapot substance example 
go to operator presets, pick our trains 19 export. And I remember in my config, I believe I called this, I believe I called this teapot underscore lot zero. That's right. So I'm going to call it that just to make it nice and simple, and consistent. So I'm going to export FBX. Now, if you're exporting your model and you have some things are not looking right or miss, uh, parts of the model are missing, one thing I would suggest doing is go up to your modifiers tab go to add modifier, hit triangulate. This will automatically convert all of the quads into triangles um, and will usually fix any errors that are happening with the model. So I'm going to just go back and re-export that again in case we had any errors. And I'm going to make sure I have my preset and hit export. All right, I'm going to save that. And that should be all we need to do for Blender. Uh, let's now go and dump our textures into this folder. Right, paste that in there. All right, should we could be good to go there. Let me open up Content Manager here and make sure um, uh, we have a valid queue. I have to delete the other one that I had made for a prior test. And there we go. So I'm going to drag this folder in that has our config, albedo normal parameter and our mesh and our thumbnail. I'm going to drag that into here. Right. <clears throat> and it gave us our typical error, not shader mode, uh, not recognized. We can ignore that. We got our default texture uh, creating, or uh, it's creating a texture TXT for our albedo normal and parameter. And so let it finish that. All right. And I'm just going to go inspect that it is using everything correct. Uh, I'm going to take a look at my albedo because that's the one I want to look at the most. All right. Uh, I do not want the alpha tag, but I don't really, it doesn't, I don't need to worry about having the tile for this mesh. So I'm just going to leave that. Um, check our normal. Yep, that's fine. And our parameter. Yep, that's fine. Okay. So we're good to go there. And we should be all fine. So let me resubmit that. And there we go. So let's see how it looks in game. All right, that looks looks nice. Now you'll notice there's a little uh, the weird artifacts going on here, especially on this this part right here. Now, Parallax doesn't really like uh, working on uh, curved um, edges. Uh, it really wants to be on a flat portion. So you may think that, okay, well, is, is this handle right here, is it actually kind of like depressing down? Well, no, what it's doing is it's manip the height map is manipulating the look of it. So it sort of looks like it's not actually there, but in reality it is. So if you don't really want this sort of look, I would suggest getting rid of the height map um, and just work with a normal map, um, un unless you fiddle around with it and have it look pretty good. Uh, I would, I personally just like would you don't use height maps too often on objects like this because it just makes it look a little strange. But I'm sure with a lot of tweaking, you probably could get it to look pretty good. But yeah, see, we got our our normal map and our height map is definitely working. Uh, we definitely have our parameter working because we can sort of see a little bit of shine here. Um, if it uh, if it were not working, uh, it would look very rough and it just or it could look very uh, metallic. But since we're not getting that, we we are looking pretty good. Um, but yeah, that is pretty much all you need to export uh, a texture from Substance Painter uh, into Trains 19. And I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Uh, and if you have any ideas of uh, another tutorial I could do, uh, please leave a comment below. And as always, thanks for watching the joys of trains.